So we've seen some examples of integrals, um, especially when we were integrating over a region like a circle, uh, that were very difficult. And we had to go through a lot of difficult substitutions uh, in order to do it. Um, so sometimes, and especially for those uh, for those circular type regions, switching to polar coordinates uh, for our calculation can help. So that's uh, so in this video I'll uh, explain how uh, to set that up and then in the next two videos I'll give some examples. This is a, an A, not another O. Okay, so recall that um, polar coordinates are given by, uh, we choose a radius r and angle theta. And so in terms of these, x is r cos theta and y is r sine theta. Uh, and to make this unique, we always take the radius to be greater than or equal to zero and the angle theta to be uh, between zero and two pi. Here you could put an e uh, less than equals here rather than just less than, it doesn't uh, really matter. Okay, so in terms of these coordinates, let's see how to do integration. So um, we'll assume that we've got a region so suppose R is a region uh, so here's be a picture of R This is our R, uh, and it'll be bounded by uh, the rays theta equals alpha and theta equals beta. So if we draw, draw these, Okay, so each of these rays, this ray is alpha, or this uh, ray is theta equals alpha, and this ray is theta equals beta. Uh, and by the curves, um, so we'll say uh, R equals g1 of theta, that'll be our bottom curve here, uh, and r equals g2 of theta, which is our um, upper curve here. So r equals g1 theta, and this is r equals g2 theta. So we'll draw uh, what I call a polar grid. Oops. Using level curves for R, and we think of R as a function of x and y, and theta x, y. So when we draw an x and y, and like a Cartesian grid like this, well, these are like ver vertical lines are level curves of x equals some constant c, and uh, horizontal lines are level curves y equals c. 
So to draw a polar grid, we'll instead draw level curves for R. So level curves for R are going to be uh, circular. Well, if we drew for the entire plane, they would be circles. Um, we only really care about this segment, sort of this uh, pie slice. And so we uh, slice up our region uh, into places that have the same radius, like this, and then uh, polar or level curves for theta will be rays. So uh, this is a ray, this is a ray, I guess we should go out farther to cover our whole region. Um, this, sorry, now this is getting, covering up. Okay, bad drawing, but you get the picture, hopefully. Um, so one of these things is, one of these guys is what we call a polar rectangle. Uh, so this isn't this isn't an actual rectangle. It's sort of curve shaped. It looks like well, okay, not like that. Um, it looks like this. So uh, we need to uh, be able to find the area of these polar rectangles. Okay, so let's clean this up as best we can. So if we're integrating in polar coordinates, um, our Riemann sum uh, will be Sn is sum over k, k are the polar rectangles, f r k theta k, uh, and then difference, so the area in the kth polar rectangle. So this is the area of the kth polar rectangle. Uh, and then R, R K theta K is a point sampled uh, from the kth polar rectangle. All right. Um, so the main thing we need to do is uh, is figure out a formula for the area of a polar rectangle. So remember that the, um, well, I wanted to keep this diagram up, but I uh, wonder if I can, no, okay. Uh, I guess I'll just clear this. Okay, um, so if we have the area, or if we have a, a circular segment with angle theta, and radius r, then recall that the area of such a thing is 1 half theta r squared. Now our polar rectangle is going to be this. Our polar rectangle is going to be not an entire one of these things, but sort of a strip of one of them. So what we'll do is let's pick uh, a point in the middle here. So if this is, um, we'll call this RK and the uh, radial sort of width of this is delta R and this is delta theta. Um, 
So these points up here, this will be R K plus delta R over two. And the bottom one will be R K minus delta R over two. So we can calculate the, uh, the area as the area of the large sector, meaning, meaning the area of this whole thing, minus area of the small sector, um, meaning where we only take this area. Okay, so by our formula, that will be uh, that will be one half delta theta, and then R K plus delta R over two squared, and then minus one half delta theta R K minus delta R over two squared. So this we expand as usual, R K squared plus R K delta R plus delta R over two squared. And then this will be R K squared minus R K delta R plus delta R over two squared. And since we're subtracting these, these guys will cancel each other out and then this one will be doubled. So this becomes, um, so we end up with just R K delta theta delta R uh, is our, is our uh, expression for the area of the kth polar rectangle. Okay, so coming back to original setup, so uh, so our Riemann sum which was uh, S n is sum over F R k theta k delta a k so I'm sort of omitting the indices to try to make this more readable, um, but I guess n is the number of polar rectangles in one of those partitions. And then k just means the kth rectangle. We label, we or number them somehow, it doesn't matter how. Um, right, so this becomes Uh, this is equal then to sum f r k theta k, and now we found that delta a k is uh, is r k delta r delta theta. So as the number of polar rectangles goes to infinity. Uh, and also while making those rectangles have sort of theta width and r width also go to zero so they get finer and finer, um, we get that, so our integral for r for f r theta dA is integral, let's, uh, Let's write that more legibly. Take a good look at this. Okay, so um, so if our formula for the Riemann sums is sum f r k theta k r k delta r delta theta, then our uh, expression for the um, for the area, or sort of for the integral of a function f r theta, 
da over region r. So this is lim n goes to infinity of Sn. This will become integral f r theta and then r dr d theta. So be careful here. dA, which for Cartesian coordinates was dx dy, is equal to r dr d theta, not dr d theta. Um, okay, and so then for our bounds, so we if we assumed our bounds were theta equals alpha, theta equals beta, then we'll have going from alpha to beta here, and then there was some like curve r equals g1 of theta and r equals g2 of theta, it's the upper and lower bounds for the r part of this integral. And so we'll put those here. Um, uh, and again, so yeah, there's a form of Fubini's theorem saying you could rewrite the order, uh, the integral in either order, um, like if you had a bound on r, uh, and then we're expressing theta in terms of that, you could do it in either order and get the same answer. Uh, so in particular, so let me just write this uh, again. So in summary, uh, the integral of f over r is f r theta da is integral f r theta just made the same mistake uh, r dr d theta and in particular um, if we integrate the constant function uh, one, then we get the area of this region. So to calculate area in polar coordinates, uh, we integrate r dr d theta uh, over the region r. So uh, I'll do examples of both of these types of integrals uh, in the remaining videos.